Hey guys, welcome back. Today we'll do another installment of the build of the High Altitude Balloon Project. Hey guys, welcome back. Glad you could join me today. Really glad so many of you are following along on this project. I'm sorry that these videos are monopolizing uh, most of my time on the channel, but hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are getting something out of it. Hopefully you find it interesting someday. So today is going to be kind of a, a bit of a random update. What I've been doing recently, as you've seen if you follow on the channel, I've been doing the payload, payload heating testing in um, my HAB module, my cooler bag. As you can see, I haven't done the insulation and haven't cut the holes for the cameras. Uh, I'm still waiting on getting a, a GoPro. Um, one of my uh, fellow YouTube content providers uh, said he'd volunteer his. I haven't heard from him recently, so I hope that's still in the works. But uh, when I get that, I will be doing some insulation in here and uh, mounting the other camera, which we'll go over in a minute. Last video, I did some testing, the live testing of the heating and the tracking. I've had some on and off problems. Um, happy to say the cell phone tracker is working beautifully 100 percent success now i'm running two separate applications on the phone one is designed for hab tracking more or less that uh, sends text and logs the information to the phone uh, the send text feature i was having trouble with it it just simply didn't work so what i did is i, I disabled that and doubled up and got another app that just sends text uh, just lat long in position doesn't send speed unfortunately but that's okay because this thing is only going to be good up to 20,000 feet or so uh, I really don't mind not getting the texts because all I care about is that this works when the thing hits the ground all I need is one message to tell me where it is that leads us into this guy I've had no end of troubles with this I actually called the manufacturer last night and I'm happy to report I made some headway this is the Spot Trace unit from, uh, well, Spot. You can Google them if you're interested in such a device. This thing's only about two months old. They're pretty new on the market, so when I called them with troubles, they were uh, more or less all ears. Uh, because I do troubleshooting for a living, um, I was able to talk to them. They, they didn't treat me uh, like they would maybe someone who has no experience with... Um, dealing with electronics problems they were they were absolutely great he didn't tell me did you change the battery he didn't go over that stuff we went right into the nuts and bolts and did what we could there's not much you can do there's no troubleshooting so what I ended up doing uh, as per his suggestion because the manufacturer is always right follow their instructions if they tell you to do something and it's going to lead to warranty just do it I updated the firmware I went ahead and changed the batteries again and it seems like this is working now. It seems that after it goes to sleep, it will wake up and begin broadcasting again. It's not gonna be a big concern because the thing will be awake for the whole flight, I think, but I don't, I need 100% faith in this thing. So I think we're almost there. Some more live tests, which I'm gonna bundle with the payload heating and the insulation and the cameras and everything live. So I, I haven't even got to testing the cameras yet. This is a, running out of time. Data logger is good. Um, one of my viewers actually um, posted a comment. Actually, I'm going to switch the camera angle here. So, one of my viewers posted a comment about um, not liking the idea of a LiPo battery. Well, I can tell you guys, these things have been used before. And actually, I found a really great PDF from the AARL where uh, they covered a HAB launch and they used exactly this style of pack, uh, 7.4 volt 2 cell. But with that said, he made me think, these things, there's no rigidity to these. These are essentially a bag of chemical. And I got thinking, well, what happens if there's airspace in this thing? This thing was the bottom of the barrel eBay special. I really love these packs, but what's gonna happen at altitude? So I got looking into it and I did find how they're supposed to be tested, which I found interesting. These things are supposed to be tested up to, I have to double check now, I think it was 40,000 feet in a um, pressure absent environment. They just put them in a vacuum chamber and if it off gases or expands or does anything foolish, it's a fail. 
And I don't know whether this brand has been through that, but being so, I found some other stuff. I think we're going to trust it. I just have this nagging worry in the back of my head that the thing's going to blow up like a balloon inside here when we get to basically zero pressure. So uh, these are the things i got to think about. Also, someone posted a comment about these. And uh, this is a concern I've had. I didn't mention. We have airspace in here. This is most definitely going to expand. How much? I don't know. Um, this gets basically taken up when it's activated, and I have to I have to look into it. But I don't think anything is used. Actually, I'm, I know I'm pretty sure nothing is used in the reaction. Otherwise, it wouldn't last long. It wouldn't be reusable for long. So there's a little danger of these things blowing up a little bit. So I may just put this in my vacuum sealer and vacuum seal um, another bag over top, and that'll. Um, they're, they're a little bit flexible, so it might contain it. I, I don't think it's going to burst. I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. So we're, gonna, we're down to using one of these and two of these for our payload heating. Good to go. This is my current fight tonight. This is my Canon PowerShot camera. It's a A560. I hacked this thing oh, a couple years ago now with the Canon Hackers Development Kit, the CHDK. It's a firmware hack. I'll see if I can show you guys. If you're not familiar with it, the Canon cameras are the only ones that you can do this. So there's the custom firmware logo that pops up. And we actually can run scripts from this. And I apologize, this probably isn't going to show up. but uh, There's a countdown intervalometer, which that's where I had the trouble with this thing. Uh, my old hack didn't work. The script was just crud. So tonight I went online, found another one. Um, I don't know what the proper name for it was because basically I copied and pasted the code right into the uh, the BAS file. And what it gave me is interval in seconds and number of shots. So I made a new SC card, got everything all set up on it because the old one was only 2 gig. We've got 4 gig in here, should be plenty of space. We've got, we can get uh, 1,235 images on here. It should be plenty enough. So I'm going to test the, uh, the hack of the script and make sure I can get the display turned off, make sure it keeps working. Uh, I'm going to have to protect the buttons. If those get bumped, it's going to disable the script. So I've got to figure that out yet too. And uh, we'll give it a run time and see how long it's going to last. These are the batteries I'm going to use. The Energizer Lithiums should be plenty. Should give us our full flight. This thing shouldn't draw much current when it's in standby with the LCD off waiting to take a picture. And in that case, all we need to do is take our number of pictures, which I don't know how many I want. I don't think I'm going to take the full 1,235. Maybe I will. I don't know. Depends. It's just more work after and post-processing. But this will give me, hopefully, the redundancy if the GoPro should have a problem, uh, which is always possible. Maybe I'll get the heating wrong and overheat the thing. Maybe I'll get it not high enough and it'll freeze. I don't think that'll be the case, though. But uh, this will be a backup for that. Anyway, that's kind of a bit of a random all over the place update. Uh, I'm really glad you guys could join me in this project. I uh, hope you find it interesting. There's, uh, I haven't, I haven't really done an engineering style project like this in a while that has so many facets, and I haven't even delved into the balloon or the recovery parachute. I have uh, my best friend doing entirely that, and he's ordering the chute and balloon. Hopefully tomorrow, we finally got the size nailed down which I don't even know what that is. I'm leaving it all up to him. I've got enough to worry about with all this stuff. But uh, happy to say the one component that hasn't let me down at all and not a bit of problem, an Arduino data logger. Ugh, the power of open source, guys. I can't troubleshoot this thing. I can somewhat troubleshoot this. I have a problem with this, boom. I can tear it apart, go into the code, measure the thing, know exactly what should be where and what should be happening mostly because I designed it but it's, it's so much simpler and uh, the last note I mentioned it in the descriptions but I didn't call it out 
this USB module. This is the HC06 USB module. This was the best idea I had on this project, bar none. When I was doing the payload heating on this in, in the previous video with it hanging on the clothesline outside, I was interfaced with this with my cell phone from over 30 feet away, periodically checking on it. Um, super, super cool. I'm impatient. I wanted to know what was going on. Then if it wasn't working as intended, that gives me the three hour duration of the test to go figure something else out. So I was just checking up on it every so often and I got exactly what I wanted out of that. So guys, uh, for a few bucks, awesome addition to any project. Remote troubleshooting, just awesome. Anyway guys, thanks for joining me today. Good luck in all your electronics ventures and uh, hit up the forum if you like and drop a comment in or check out my website. There, there is a build page for this now and the live tracking is live from this. Um, the web page is suspended right now, but on launch day, this will be live and I'll try and Twitter feed the uh, location of this so you guys can follow along at home. Anyway, thanks guys.